Salvatore Mancuso, a Colombian warlord, was brought home after serving a 12-year prison sentence in the U.S. This person is also involved in more than 1,500 murders and disappearances in Colombia and is expected to cooperate in the investigation of war crimes in the 1990s and 2000s. On February 28, Salvatore Mancuso arrived at Bogotá's El Dorado Airport on a chartered flight, also carrying dozens of Colombians who had been deported from the U.S., after illegally crossing the southern border. Mancuso was quickly arrested by police, wearing a green helmet and bulletproof vest. At least seven security guards accompanied Mancuso, holding bulletproof shields over their heads, as if to protect Mancuso from being shot. Mancuso, 59, is one of the leaders of the United Defense Forces of Colombia, a paramilitary group founded by cattle ranchers who have fought against leftist rebels in one of the most violent periods of Colombia's decades-long armed conflict. Mancuso was born into a wealthy family in the Cordoba region of northwestern Colombia and was a prosperous cattle rancher. He began collaborating with the Colombian military in the early 1990s after his family was threatened with blackmail by rebel groups. Mancuso quickly moved from providing intelligence to the army to leading operations against leftist rebels and by the late 1990s had become one of the most powerful paramilitary leaders. Most in Colombia. In 2003, he joined a peace agreement under which paramilitary leaders surrendered in exchange for reduced sentences. In multiple hearings with Colombian judges, including several telephone interviews while later in U.S. custody, Mancuso spoke about his relations with politicians and about the possibility of politicians' high-ranking family involved in war crimes. However, the extradition of this person to the U.S. in 2008 slowed down the investigation process. Under the administration of President Álvaro Uribe, Mancuso was extradited to the U.S. along with 13 other paramilitary leaders wanted for drug trafficking in the U.S. It is believed that the surprise extradition was part of an effort to prevent Mancuso and other paramilitary leaders from revealing their relationships with Colombian officials. Mancuso was convicted in 2015 for transporting more than 130 tons of cocaine into the U.S. The former Colombian paramilitary group leader completed his 12-year sentence in 2020 and has been detained in an immigration detention center in the U.S. for the past three years. Mancuso's lawyers proposed deporting their client to Italy because he was an Italian citizen, his family immigrated from Italy, claiming that Mancuso's life would be in danger in Colombia. Instead, U.S. officials decided to return Mancuso to Colombia arguing that his return to the country was important for the investigation of war crimes. Human rights organizations and Colombian government officials hope Mancuso will cooperate with the justice system and provide information about crimes committed when paramilitary groups fight rebels in rural Colombia in the 1990s and early 2000s. Victims of the country's conflict also want Mancuso to help shed light on hundreds of killings and disappearances committed by paramilitary gunmen, including illegal settlement where victims were buried in mass graves. This event marks an important step towards reconciliation and building lasting peace in Colombia, said Fernando Garcia, director of Colombia's National Immigration Agency. However, Laura Bonilla, a conflict researcher in Colombia for the Foundation for Peace and Reconciliation, said, The problem Mancuso faces is that if he talks too much, he can be killed.